if you can get it to run. All right, so what we have here is a uh, Honda 50 Trail 50 mini bike or monkey bike. Goes on a couple of different names. Early 70s, late 60s, early 70s vintage. And the idea was to try and take some of the parts off of this engine to fix the Honda Trail 50 that I have that uh, is missing the top end and a bunch of pieces. Unfortunately, this is the cylinder that was on the Trail 50. And if you guys might be able to eyeball that up, you can see that those are not the same size. So although they're both 50 cc's, I do not believe that both of them are similar. So we're looking for a push rod engine for that. Again, the one that's in there is a 1962 push rod motor, not an overhead cam. It's a different setup. I was trying to go stick with that. Uh, we may have to revisit that project with something else. But we have this in the garage, this well-loved uh, specimen. And uh, we think for uh, shits and giggles to see if we can get it to run. Doesn't it look lovely? Just, it's lived a good life. Very well cared for. So, let's uh, get her uh, chalked up in the table, get the table up in here, and start at it. I don't know if I said, but this uh, came from the uh, Harvey Spooner collection. He was going to allow me to take the engine parts off of it and then give the carcass back to him. So, we appreciate that. It might be looking like he's going to get the whole thing back. What do you say? We take this dried up little prune here. some oil down in that compression that's a good sign well three things we need compression fuel and spark when we go look into what we're going to need for spark See if there's anything in the crankcase. Don't think so. Eh, yeah, there is actually. So, as we were, what were we doing? Oh yeah, spark. It's kind of spark. Moved over the other side of the engine. I do not physically see any screws on that cover. Let's see if we can. I think it rotates maybe. There you go. Let me out. These things have a two speed transmission with an automatic clutch. But I want to eyeball the points inside there. See what they look like. Okay, hopefully you can see um, inside there. It's got a set of points. Is that not loose? Yeah, it is. Guys, it was right there. What I was looking at was the points right here. And they have definitely some crud on them. They're going to need to be cleaned up, and we've got to figure out what's kind of going on with that, too. Let's go look at the rest of it. Well, and just the, the coil that generates the power when it's spinning is that guy right there. Does not need a battery. So let's go. And I don't know if it's going to be better to pull that right off of there. Plus, we got to find out which one's top dead center. That one or that one. I don't see them opening on either one. Trying to look for a mark which one would have the timing mark on it. What do you think? I don't think that's a timing mark. You would think it would be something fairly visual, wouldn't you? Well, I guess we're going to find out. The one that uh, opens after we clean it will be the one. I wonder if we might pop this guy off of here. And uh, looks like somebody struck it with a hammer right there, though. Yeah, try taking this off of there and get in there, cleaning it a little bit. I have a feeling somebody else has already beat us to the punch. 
something sometimes these guys are uh, reverse thread I'm not sure what this is let's go give her a shot it's that way that wasn't even tight yeah, I definitely feel somebody was in here before us so. let's go uh, rig up a little puller on there let's make sure we got some room that we're not gonna smash into anything I don't feel anything That one's too small. These are, yeah. They are not going to fit in there. Well, ain't that a predicament? I wonder if we can get this guy. Come on. Yeah. Ah, yeah. I don't know if we're going to get this nut back on now. We getting it by one thread. There you go. Let's see. Let's see where she should. <laughs> that comes apart a lot easier than some stuff does, huh? So the can is right on here. It opens those points. Those guys definitely need a bath. I'm not quite sure why that guy was loose. Do we have the wire going all the way to it? I think so. That guy. Nope. There's a problem. That guy is supposed to be wired to the to that plug. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. You can probably see it. If you move your fat fingers, we can. That end right there, that spade is supposed to be slipped in on that nut. It's not. Now we know why that was loose. Open that back up again, and I think it goes. This this whole system has to be isolated. What I mean by that is, uh, it can't ground out to the body. So, right here and right here are two like uh, nylon washers, not nylon, something else, uh, almost like a bake light material. So that coil stays isolated down through the points, and then this wire is going to run up. Should run up to the coil or key switch. Probably both. Probably has a kill switch and then yeah, it runs the other way to the coil and a condenser. So let me get that guy reconnected up. Let's go clean those points and put this back together and put a gap in there. Got those points cleaned up. I'm trying to get them back installed there, but uh, there's not much for a room. I wonder if actually it might be better to. Uh, Get that thing right out of there and tighten the wire up and then slip it in here in the back. Now you little, little bitch. <laughs> now the struggle. Anything pull it right out of there? Yeah. wire straight behind it too. So again like I said it can't touch anything. Right. That back in. I don't know if maybe somebody was just trying to take the points apart or sure what the deal was why that was or maybe it just vibrated fell apart fell apart and lost spark screw holder there we'll get that on there and we need to get the 
this guy off. Well, there's a time in mark. So top dead center is right here. So that cam rides on the point. So I am going to clean this surface up. And I'm going to put a little dab on that pad of grease, a little dab, actually just rub, rub it right on here and that'll keep that tap from wearing out. If you don't do that, you hear this little chirping sound. And slowly over time, it wears that pad down and the point gap starts closing up. That's true with on, on anything. So you gotta put a little bit of lube on there. All right, let's go. Let's hit it with a scotch right clean that off. Let's go get ourselves a little bit of, a little bit of goo. It'll spread itself out anyway. You want to work that. You don't want too much though. You don't want to get anything flung up onto the points though. Where's our key? Is that key still in? And I guess that pin is our key. There, so that's where our points should be open, I believe. So let's go throw that nut back on there in the washer. And where'd the nut go? Hate me losing nuts. And so we're going to go back in. I'm not sure where you guys are going to be able to see them. Let's see if I can sneak you over here a little. Yeah, it's going to be hard for all, all of us to fit in there. And on top, you can take them and tweak the points. Just like a... I'm not going to be able to get it with the screwdriver. We'll go get ourselves a we'll go get a thinner screwdriver. Let's continue to fumble our way through that. Right. So that would be top dead center. Right there. So that mark and that mark. And you gotta get in there in that groove. that opening up a little bit. I see a little bit of a gap there. I am going to close that. Tighten that down rather. Yeah, if you guys can see those points opening and closing. We're going to call it right there. I'm going to guess it's probably a little on the tight side. We're going to leave it like that for now and see if we got spark. I don't know what the gap is supposed to be. I'm going to say probably about 16. That's probably your my calibrated eye, I'm going to call it a 10, but it should be good enough to check to see if we got spark. So looking at these wires, here's the one that went up to the front of the handlebars. That would have been the kill switch, wherever it was on the handlebars. It runs down and it ties in with the uh, coil wire. And then the wire continues on and taps into the condenser. And the coil and the condenser looks kind of iffy too. Yeah, our plug wire doesn't have much of an end on it. Let's whittle some of that back. Let me see, I might even have something I can thread into that that we can put onto the plug and we'll give it a couple of kicks. See if we get some spark. I haven't found anything right away, but let's see. We can just kind of cut back on that. Expose some wire. for the right job. Why don't you just hold it with your fingers and see what happens, right? Let's go. I should probably get my headlight off of it. Can you guys see? All right. That is very good, Spark. You know what that means, don't you? Yeah. Let me 
say we go in. That's probably way too much for this little tiny motor. Seems she'll cough to life. Long enough. <laughs> Path of least resistance. Let's go. Come in. You can do it. Stay. You guys want to hold that for me? Ah, oh, come on. It's uh, it's just gonna be a shorter line there. I need to get close enough. Before it falls off, let's give it a quick kick. This is that kick. It's gonna pop off. to it and spin it. Wonder. Maybe I just got between the oil and the gas, maybe we just fouled it out. I would say yes. It's a little too wet. Go we'll clean that up, we'll try it again. Not sure if this is gonna work for you. Let me get this light out of the way. There we go. So I started looking at the plug and I was digging at it with a probe and it definitely is pushing up some sludge from around it. So I have a feeling sometimes what happens a plug will have spark in regular atmosphere but when it goes under compression it won't spark. So I don't have another one of these, at least I don't think so. So I'm going to take a little bit of time and or best not to break that insulator in there. Clean out around inside there. Get that guy. Second chance. Yeah, but that's kind of cruddy. Let's try it again and put just a little bit of fuel in it. Again, probably more than enough. Come on. You can do it. I get away with an alligator clip too. Ah. I don't know what we got for a throttle. There's no grip on there. Let's see if we can pull that throttle up. I may have opened the throttle a little. It also has a choke which is closed. We don't want that. We want the choke open. All right. I'm about to get you in there. Hold on. We are looking. Yeah. Right there. It's a big mud wasp inside the the car. Big old goober of a nest. Let's unbolt that intake. Get that right off of there. I got that one off. That one's really tight, so I'm gonna try taking it just from the intake. I already got these guys cracked loose. Let's 
it's all holding that just that stiff fuel line gotta get the throttle cable off it too You got a spark. That's a good sign. Means all the electrical components are. Yeah. I would say this fuel line is a little on. This gas tank's totally shot too. It's got a big rot hole in it. I'm not that concerned about damaging it. Let's see if we can get this thing right out of there. Wire cutters. That's what I was seeing. That's not good. What do I do the old? Flutter. Let's give her a good amount. Hydro lock it. Got a pop. jumper <laughs> what I might try doing I might try opening that uh, point gap up a little bit because that also does affect the timing of it too it's got a huge point gap now I want to go pop the valve cover off. The bolts out of that valve cover. Yeah, that's not good. The sucker's got. It's about 50 thou on that one. Let's see what the other one looks like. So what I'm afraid of, I wonder if that valve is just not coming up all the way and seating. See the amount of space that guy has? I don't know if it's missing a keeper or something on the top of that because that one looks more proud than that one right let's see if that's a cap or not yeah let's 
spin the push rod, see if it's bent. I'm going to spin them, see if they're bent. If not, we'll loosen that adjuster up. We'll try to take some of that play out so that that valve is better. Actually, kind of looks like both of them. I'm not sure what the gap is supposed to be on those, but I know it's not supposed to be that much. I had a something I could thread in there. I could do a, 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 a compression, a, a leak down test. See, oil's pushing out of the top. Yeah, that gap is way, way too much. All right, let's go. Get that guy apart. Take it off. Doesn't look bent. It's pretty good. I don't see a ton of wear on it either. Yeah, let's just go and adjust them. Feels like it comes up all the way. Again, we're just going crude and dirty, but I just make it so I have a little bit of play in each one of them. I don't know, there's probably four or five thou in there maybe. So that should be good enough to, actually feels like it's got more compression too. Pop the valve cover back on, give it another shot. All fails. I also adjusted the points. So I'm not sure which one it was. All right, I did two things instead of one. One was uh, closed up the points. Let's go throw a little bit of fuel down it. See if it starts with the fuel or if it needs a de to go. It was the points. That's what it was. Hey, what do you say we go and dissect that carburetor? Yeah, not much air was going to go through that, was there? Let's uh, operate. I wonder if we need to back this guy off first. Is that just a drain or? It's probably just a drain maybe for the bolt. Find out. If the bolt doesn't come off then we know we have to back that out. It might be a mixture screw. Might not. <laughs> Some things definitely do put up a fight. I don't think we're... Uh... That was going to run without a cleaning. What do you think? All right, we should have an adjustment screw over here. Two of them. There they are. I fired up the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. Let that get warm. Let it do its thing. Spring gonna come out of there. So we'll throw this in the tank and let it soak. And while that's doing its thing, we'll go and jump on some other stuff on the bike. So I think it's a combination. I think, um, actually, I, probably with the original problem was the valves got super loose. And uh, that's the idle speed, and that one's gonna be air fuel mix. So the valves got super loose. The spark wasn't there because somebody took it apart. Or the wire fell off or whatever it was. And the points weren't open. So I would say 
the original mechanical failure was the valves. Somebody screwed with the spark thinking that was it. Screwed that up and then gave up on it. And then 40 years passed. And here we are today. Okay, I'm threading. I see it physically turning. It's not coming out. Well, we'll leave it that be for now. Let's go take a knock out that pin, get the float off of it, and uh, let it soak for a while. Blow some compressed air through there. See if we can get the rest of that uh, mud, mud wasp nest out of there. I mean, I think the chances of this guy coming back are how good that needle is going to be is probably going to be the yes or no part of it. Somewhere in there is a pin. I'm going to have to set it up in the vise. Just need a little more finesse, that's all. Might be enough to get it out of there. there you go. That needle's gonna be the biggest part of it. What kind of shape that is in. Maybe. Definitely say no fuel's gonna flow through that though. Let's go shoot compressed air through that way. No. She is totally clogged. I think I am going to let it soak the way it is. Let's see if we can maybe get that seal out of there. No, that's, that seal's hard as a rock. I'm going to leave it alone let that soak in it too. Got the carb soaking in the ultrasonic cleaner. What do you see? We start jumping on some of the other stuff. You can get it freed up. Not really looking to put any money into this thing for obvious reasons. First of all, it's not even mine. <laughs> That's soaking a little. Let's see if those tires will take some air. A lot of water came out of them. See if we can get to the stem. There it is. We'll try the old air gun straight on deal. Might work. Let's put some in it. Don't want to overdo it. <laughs> it's enough to hold it, I guess. Sucker's just really tight, or is it just crappy? A little water coming out. Nothing full throttle can't fix, right? We say we uh, try to look at the front one. I think the front one's not even, not even on the bead. Let's. Uh, the vice
Good. Let's not push our luck with that one either, right? What else do you want to do? Uh, I should probably make up something for that plug wire. You're going to need a gas tank. I don't know if I'm going to get into all that if that carb is not going to come back, though. I'm not really giving that carb very much hope of coming back. So I wonder maybe we should look for an alternate and maybe like a, a moped carburetor or something. I tried looking on the uh, the uh, Trail 50 and there's a different style carburetor. It's not that same setup, so that's not going to work. Let me see what I can dig up. Let's go look and see how it did after its first 20 minute submersion. Better. Possible. Where's the other half might be in the basket? I'm gonna go let those guys simmer for a little while longer. So unfortunately the only thing I had was this guy. What was this one? Moped type of setup. Uh, actually it might even be the those kit motors, I'm not sure. Anyway, that's not gonna go on there without making a whole new intake and everything. Don't want to get into that. So we're gonna still move forward with the carb that we have. Seems like the chain is doing good. Should be good enough. Let's see if we got gears. We got gears, that's good. And second gear. Noise alert. I got them back out of there. Started blowing some air through. There, they are what they are, right? Uh, this guy, I believe, is just held in by pressure from the bottom of the bowl, so that should not be threaded in there. I think we probably just maybe, here we go. Pull and lift out on that. We need to go clean that guy up because nothing is going to pass through there. I don't know if that emulsion tube will come out of there. Give it a little push. Yeah. Can you clean that guy up? I think we might be able to get air through. Kinda. Should probably get a socket on that, get that guy out of there too. See if we can uh, clean up behind that. I'm just gonna work my way around. I wonder if I should, I if I should throw it back in with that. Hmm. Let's see if we can get that. What I'm afraid of is it's, what was that? It's going to flood over because the needle and seat's not going to work. And I would think there would be a seal in the bottom of this. Oof. Looks like definitely, uh, looks like the arteries are closing in on it a little bit, huh?
What else were we just looking at? The other... Oh, we shoot some air to that guy. I'm not sure how tiny that port is. Now we can go backwards. The gasket might go though. I shoved the wire bristle down that guy. The jet that came out of there. Maybe. Again, our biggest thing is going to be whether this guy, the needle and seat, is going to shut off. I think maybe we are going to have to do a little bit of polishing on that. Let's see, we go with a little valve lapping compound. Looks pretty shiny inside, huh? Go wash that up and see. I would have thought there would have been a a seal on the bottom of that. I don't think the tip has it. Usually one or the other has a a soft tip to seal on. I don't see one in either one. Well, it seems to be working. You flip it that direction, you blow into the the uh, fuel inlet and it's off and you flip it over and it blows through. Hopefully, when we put it back together, it'll kind of do the same. That guy can go back in. And that will line up alone. I think we could put the bowl on. You know what, I'm gonna take a little minute and uh, pick away at some of this crap that's in there. See if we can make that a little bit better. Uh, that crap's not floating around in there. We put the ball on, put the couple of jets, uh, the uh, adjusting screws back in it, and uh, that should be good to go at least. Well, the carb's all back together, and I, I wish it well, <laughs> but uh, this is the slide for it, but there's a problem. That should not be able to do that. That pin should stay all the way uh, spring-loaded down, so we're going to have to go and get into this guy, figure out what happened inside here. There's generally like a washer that it fits up underneath there, there that is missing or it's good. We got throttle. There's no there's no grip up there. So I'm gonna go take that apart and see if we can fix this. Let's see if we can get that guy off of there. You gotta get the cable up and over. Yeah. There it goes. Let's slide back down. And that pin. That pin should get retained down the bottom but it looks like that clip right there but that clip is on the wrong side so I'm gonna go push that up put the pin back down I'm gonna clean it up first put it all back together hopefully this will be in focus and I can see that it's stuck in here so when you roll on the throttle this slide pulls up it allows more air to come in and more fuel this is like a it meters how much fuel comes up through the main jet in the center of it so if that pin was floating around there we're just uh, probably just giving it Way too much gas and enough air. So that guy goes like that with the cable. With the cable, you kind of see. It'll block off the the air, and then as it comes up, it, it brings equal amount of fuel and air in, in a pre-measured rate. And then that pin has a couple of uh, slots in it too that you can adjust that pin up and down to give it a little bit more, a little less fuel. Got that throttle cable out of there, and it's really. It moves, but it, 
is not moving very well. So I'm going to go get the oiler on there and uh, shoot some oil down it. Let's yeah, see how this works for us. Smaller cables sometimes it, it oozes out around there instead of shooting down the cable. We are going to find out. Very nice when you see it come out the other end and you know you really got it. Let's see if this uh... happy cable. And working that a little bit. As long as it returns, <laughs> should be good. Um, I don't have a throttle for it. I wonder if we could probably hook it up to maybe a brake lever and just have it throttle as a lever. You guys can see down the side there. But boom, boom, boom. Returns. That's good. I'm just going to, again, make something up for this end. Huh? Come on, that's professional right there. Just a little lever off the other side for the front brake. We don't need brakes. Brakes are for quitters, right? So that should be that. I think we need to get a gas jug set up on it. This tank has a a ridiculously large hole in one of the sides of them. You stick your hand up inside. So that tank is is a no-no. Yeah, that might be an issue. So I don't know. Maybe we can clamp it up on the handlebars somewhere around here. All right. You thought the throttle was bad. Wait till you get a load of my gas tank. <laughs> All right. We got that. So we go from that size fuel line. We shoved another fuel line into it to make it fit that fuel line down below good old tape holding it on safety third and uh, our spark our spark plug retainer just so happens to be a tie wrap holding that guy on there i say we go put a little bit of fuel in it give it a couple of kicks and hopefully she kicks over and uh, we tweak that carb probably be a good idea not to fill it what do you think Putting the good stuff in it too. With cam too. Let's see if we're pissing out anywhere first. Let's give it another half inch. All right. Anything? Is she weeping at all? Yeah, it said I actually want to put a little bit of oil in it. It's a little low on the thing. I dribble a little bit of fuel on it. How many kicks do you think it's going to take this time? Uh, what do you think? Choke on? Let's go with. I'm not sure which way it's on. That's on. Yes.
you don't want to go in gear. Uh oh. <laughs> I didn't want to go in gear. I would click it down with it. You held it down, it would stay, and then when you would come back up, it was just kind of going in a neutral. It should be a two speed, too. Do we have leakies kind of going on? Oof. She's there. Uh, yeah. Poop <laughs> pegs a little in the, uh, out of whack. Guess we'll go with that. Point wire came off. <laughs> I must say that was a bit of fun. <laughs> Little wire came off. Got to get some uh, an end for that, a boot, and we'll screw it back in and put a regular clip on top of it. May have something out back we can kind of go steal. But uh, yeah, it seems like it runs all right. Car actually came back. I'm surprised. And uh, no fuel's really pissing on the floor. The plug's loose a little. Valve cover your gasket's leaking a little after we took that off, but nothing terrible. It's not like it's dripping on the floor, but you can see it's a little on the wet side. Uh, what else? I don't know. May or may not see this again. We'll uh, uh, possibly have some more fun with it. Or possibly it's uh, just, just going to go back to uh, Harvey and he can put that back in his collection for his other ones. But for the little uh, pile that it is, it sure is a blast. <laughs> I can tell you that. Yeah, well, second gear was fighting me. You got to go put it in and kept popping out of second gear or just like going into neutral at second gear. And I think that's a common problem with these engines as far as what I understand. Plus, you know, it's meant for a 50 pound kid, not a, a 210 pound kid. But I actually moved it pretty good. I was surprised. It's a, a barrel of fun for how tiny the thing is. It's a barrel of monkeys, so to speak. Well, guys, I'm going to go wrap it up for now on this one. I just wanted to go putt around with it and just kind of do an assessment on the engine and its components. It actually seems fairly decent. I don't know what's going to happen in the future with it. It may get fixed up. may go back to Harvey. I may keep it, make a deal with him. Not sure. But uh, till the next one, guys, I'm going to go shut this one down. I want to thank you all for kind of hanging out in the garage with me and having some fun. Till the next time. Later.